Hi, my name is Claire Ryan. I'm the coordinator of the Midwest Invasive Plant Network and of the Woody Invasives of the Great Lakes or the Wiggle Collaborative. In this video, we're going to take a look at the invasive tree white mulberry or Morris alba. I'll tell you briefly about this species history and current status in North America, why it's invasive, and then we'll look at how to identify it in the field. White mulberry is native to China. It's the host species for the silkworm, Bombyx mori, and is considered a critical component of industrial silk production. It was brought to the United States in the early 1600s with the goal of establishing a domestic silk industry, which ironically never happened, but the tree is still here. It's also seen some use as a landscape tree. It's very fast growing as a shade tree and is well adapted to even extremely urban conditions. Today, only males are in ornamental trade, but some female cultivars are used for fruit production. However, it's pretty limited due to the short shelf life of the fruit. Today, white mulberry occurs in all of the lower 48 states and most of Canada as well. White mulberry is dioecious, which means that male and female flowers occur on different plants. The female trees go on to produce enormous quantities of fruit called droops. Spread occurs when birds and mammals eat the fruit and then deposit the seeds in a different location. Now male trees launch large quantities of pollen that cause allergies in some people, including myself. The pollen release mechanism in male white mulberry flowers moves at speeds over half the speed of sound. It's just kind of a cool fact, but this was the fastest movement ever recorded in biology at the time it was discovered in 2006. White mulberry tends to grow in disturbed and sunny areas, including forest edges, old fields, riparian areas, and rights of way. It's not shade tolerant, so you won't find it deep in the forest. It can be very weedy in ag fields and pastures and in your yard too. Uh, the root system is very large and shallow and can damage infrastructure in urban areas. Perhaps its greatest negative impact is the genetic dilution of native red mul mulberry, Morris rubra. White mulberry doesn't tend to grow in the same places as red mulberry because the native prefers relatively high quality forest understories. However, its windborne pollen can travel across really large distances and hybridization favors white mulberry genetics. Now let's take a look at some identification features. White mulberry is typically a medium to a large tree, growing up to about 40 feet in both height and crown width, though occasionally it can get much, much larger. The young bark is orange or tan, and the older bark has furrows that may be orangish at the center. Leaves are alternately arranged and are often irregular in shape. Some leaves may be entire, like this one, and either roughly round or elliptical in shape, while other leaves are lobed. Here's a, a lobed leaf. The lobe leaves are often asymmetrical. The leaf size can range from about two to seven inches long. Now, red mulberry, on the other hand, the leaves tend to be much larger, maxing out at about 10 inches in length. The upper leaf surface of white mulberry is shiny, as you can see here, and smooth. It's a medium green and hairless, while the lower surfaces are a little bit paler but they're either hairless or only hairy along the veins. Now red mulberry on the other hand, the leaves are dull on both sides with a rough texture on the top surface and are usually hairy on the entirety of the bottom surface. The flowers of white mulberry are born on catkins in the spring as the leaves emerge. Fruit on the female flowered trees are blackberry-like droops which start out white, gradually turning pink, red, and eventually black as they ripen in midsummer. The fruits are about a half inch to one inch long, whereas red mulberry fruits may be larger, over one inch. Context though, the habitat they're occurring in is really the most reliable way to tell white mulberry from red. If it's growing in a mature forest understory, it's not going to be a white mulberry. And if it's growing al along railroad tracks or in a situation like this one in an urban park forest edge, it's not going to be red mulberry. If you have a white mulberry on your property, we do recommend that you remove it. And this is especially important if you have a male tree and live within about 10 miles of a mature forest habitat where red mulberry may be growing. 
white mulberry doesn't sucker from the roots, so there are more control options available to you. If you can find it in a nursery, red mulberry is a great tree to grow in naturalized settings or in a forested property, but it really won't tolerate shallow urban soils or pollution. For urban applications, American linden and tulip poplar and several of our native oak species are large native trees with excellent wildlife benefits. And then non-native, non-invasive options uh, with good urban pollution tolerance include ginkgo, male varieties, and little leaf linden. To learn more about control techniques and alternatives, check out our website, woodyinvasives.org, and please subscribe to our channel for more useful videos like this one. Thanks.